Welcome to a journey back in time as we dive into the lesser known pages of history. Today we are exploring the remarkable story of the PBM Mariner, a true giant of the skies during World War II. This incredible flying boat was overshadowed by its more famous counterpart, the PBY Catalina. It was a force to be reckoned with. From its early days of development in the late 1930s to its crucial role in the war efforts and beyond, this aircraft has a tale that's worth every second of our time. Let us uncover the fascinating journey of the PBM Mariner, an American legend that deserves its moment in the spotlight. The Martin Aircraft Company The PBM Mariner, a successful patrol aircraft during World War II, was an 80-foot-long monster that delivered remarkable performance. Despite being manufactured in fewer quantities, the Mariner outperformed its elder sibling, the PBY Catalina, in many ways. The company's origin may be traced back to 1937 when Martin and Consolidated fought for aircraft contracts. Martin attempted to create flying boat design and Navy standards, but by 1934, Consolidated had won the favor. Martin had to go elsewhere for orders, temporarily entering the civilian aircraft market with Martin M130. However, Pan American Airways ultimately rejected it in favor of the stronger Boeing 314. Martin's failure to acquire contracts was due to bad luck rather than any shortcomings in the company's capabilities, as competition was fierce during the golden era of aviation. The 3 8 size prototype Due to a Navy requirement, Martin resorted to flying boats for military purposes in 1936. The aircraft had to be a flying boat with great range, endurance and handling capabilities as well as able to accommodate a large crew for lengthy operations. By 1937, the Model 162, a modernized version of Martin's P3M, had been created. The 162 was powered by two massive radial engines and had a huge roomy hull with gold wings. Turrets armed with 12.7mm M2 Browning machine guns were installed to defend the bomber. Despite its outstanding design, the Navy expressed quick interest and requested a single prototype despite the fact that the prototype had not yet been completed. The Navy was keen to get its hand on the brilliant new design, so they decided to create a tiny 3 8 size model to test the flying qualities before committing to creating a full-scale one. Financial considerations such as trouble procuring contracts and the Great Depression affected this choice as it was impossible to build a huge 80-foot aircraft without a certainty of selling it. A single man crewed Martin's small-scale model, a Martin 162A Tadpole Clipper, which was propelled by a 120-horsepower Chevrolet engine attached to two outboard propellers with belts. XPBM-1 Martin's proficiency in the design was widely dated by the model's maiden test in December 1937. Construction continued on the first full-size aircraft which was finished in 1939 with 15 tons of steel. The initial prototype known as the XPBM-1 was more advanced in terms of aerodynamics and hydrodynamics than the Catalina and it established the standard for American flying boats. Advances in these sectors enabled the design to tolerate reduced drag and improved handling, both of which were critical to the aircraft performance. The XPBM prototype was powered by twin Wright R2600 Cyclone radial engines providing 1600 horsepower each. The aircraft was launched on February 18, 1939, and after testing, it had the required general flying characteristics. On the other hand, it had troubles with the strong tail flutter, making control difficult for the crew. The tail attachment point was altered to match the inner gull wing, giving the aircraft its trademark look. Both Bombay were likewise housed in the engine cells, enabling for reduced drag, greater speed, range and perhaps increased carrying capacity. Before the maiden flight, the US Navy placed an order for 20 of these aircraft and the first production Mariner, dubbed PBM-1, was scheduled to equip U.S. Navy units in September of 1940. Submarine and U-Boat Hunter The Mariner, 
a 118 foot long 27 foot tall aircraft was a class leader it had eight 50 caliber machine guns two within the blisters and a maximum take off weight of 25 tons initially mariners and catalinas would conduct neutrality patrol across atlantic marine time lanes with their outstanding range and extended flying durations necessitating unique design elements the mariner had bed accommodations, a full kitchen with a cooker and pantry for food. Following Japan's attack on the Pearl Harbor, the mariner found themselves in a new chapter of their history and began utilizing the PBM-1 as an anti-submarine aircraft. They first performed extensive patrols of the Atlantic and Pacific in pursuit of enemy boats with their first kill coming on June 30, 1942 against a German U-boat. Mariners were credited with sinking 10 U-boats throughout the conflict. However, given that Mariner's crew may be self-sufficient for days at time, the PBM's great range could be limiting issue for the aircraft insurance. Later Variants The retractable floats of the PBM-1 were not sturdy enough for maritime landing and periodically snapped off. The PBM-2 was created by Martin, who added retractable floats for stronger fixed position versions and increased internal field capacity by 75%. This improved PBM-1 increased its range to 4,000 miles, but only one was manufactured and used as a test bed by Martin until 1944. Martin suggested a PBM-3 variation in 1940, which the Navy and the government ordered to finance the building of a new facility to expand production. The updated type had 1,700 horsepower right cyclones, fixed and strength wing floats, and a payload capacity of 8,000 pounds higher than the early B-17s. Other modifications included new power nose and dorsal turrets, as well as changed beam location. The initial few PBM-3s had the original three-bladed propellers, but due to better performance, manufacturing swiftly switched to a four-bladed propeller. The Mariner GR Mark I was shipped to Britain for examination, but the controls were too heavy and tiresome for extended patrol flights, and they were never operationally used. The Americans employed them extensively for certain objectives, including warfare in the Atlantic and sinking U-boats. The Mariners were crucial during the Battle of Saipan, where a seaplane base was established to conquer the islands. Wilcox Dry Lake Mirage Scott Fitzgerald was faring one PBM Mariner over Arizona in the spring of 1944 when the engine failed, deeming it dangerous to continue with no water nearby. Fitzgerald landed the plane on Wilcox Dry Lake and it was fully unharmed save for some scratching on the underside of the hull. The Mariner was then striped off of non-essential equipment to decrease the cargo, outfitted with specialized beaching gear turned it into wind and flew to San Diego without incident. This specific BBM became known as the Wilcox Dry Lake Mirage. The Mariner would continue to prove their importance later in the Pacific War. The Rescue Operations On March 4, 1945, a Mariner piloted by Jack Christopher would find eight survivors from a shot down B-29 at sea. The waves, however, were too rough and landing was impossible, so they dropped smoke lights and life rafts for the downed airmen while circling above for six hours well into the night until a ship came and rescued the men. The Mystery of Flight 19 One of the most famous incidents of the aviation history of the 20th century is the incident of Flight 19, where on December 5, 1945, a group of five General Motors TBM Avenger torpedo bombers that disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle. After the incident, finally the order came from the US Navy to send two Martin Mariner planes to start the search operation and locate the Flight 19 planes. On December 5, 1945, the US Navy sent two Martin Mariner's planes to search for the missing Flight 19 planes in the Bermuda Triangle area. The two PBM Martin Mariner's Training 32 and Training 49 were used to patrol ocean areas detect enemy submarine operations and rescue pilots and crew who would have crashed into the Atlantic. The two mariners were on a special mission with Training 32 heading straight into the ocean 
and training 49 going northbound along the east coast. At 9.12 p.m., a freighter ship SS Gaines Mill reported a large ball of fire dropping into the ocean followed by a huge explosion at a short distance away. Training 32 was still searching for the Flight 19 and was in contact touch with the base station. At 10.45 p.m., they reached the area but they saw no fire, oil slicks or debris floating. The captain of SS Gaines Mill confirmed that he saw a plane catching fire and then crashing into the ocean and exploding. The next day, USS Solomon's CVE-67 participated in the search operation and reported that the second mariner, Training 49, was the plane that caught fire and dropped into the ocean and caused the explosion. Some analysts speculated that a secret lighting inside the cabin would have blown up the plane. But this theory was ruled out due to the mariners carrying a large amount of gas. The US Navy board reported that greenish lights are often seen along the coastlines of Florida, which is related to St. Elmo's fire, which reduces a huge amount of electrical charge. The mariners were prone to explosions due to gas leakage from their tanks, and the investigations of Martin mariners remain incomplete. Post-war carrier during World War II, the Mariner, a popular aircraft, had a good combat record and was regarded as highly as the renowned Catalina. PBM-5 featured more powerful Pratt & Whitney R2800-34 radials, providing up to 2100 horsepower, continued post-war development. The PBM-5A, an amphibious variation with tricycle landing gear, was the ultimate variant. These aircraft remained in service as long-range marine time patrol aircraft until they were finally displaced by newer designs such as the P-5M Merlin. The final U.S. squadron retired their mariners in 1956 and after a 16-year service life, the PBM had some export success. With Argentina operating nine throughout the 1950s and Australia, the Netherlands and Uruguay also deploying the aircraft. However, in the early 1940s, the aircraft renown began to dwindle and the smaller Catalina began to overshadow it in popular consciousness. Furthermore, high-profile mishaps including the Mariner in the post-war areas began to wrongly give the ship a reputation as a widowmaker. Now, the PBM Mariner, a famous aircraft created by Martin in the 1950s, came at a critical time in Martin's survival as a legend of its day and a contemporary of the Catalina. The aircraft was dependable, well-liked by its crew, and performed admirably, serving all over the world for up to a quarter century after its maiden flight. The original 3.8 scale model used to test the airplane has also been preserved and can be shown at the Baltimore Museum of Industry. Despite its relatively obscurity, the Mariner has earned a place in the aviation history as a classic aircraft and an American legend. In conclusion, the PBM Mariner stands as a testament to the ingenuity and determination of its creators at Martin. From its early days vying for contracts to its vital role in the World War II and beyond, the Mariner showcased remarkable performance and versatility. Despite facing challenges and evolving aviation trends, the Mariner's legacy endures as a symbol of American innovation and a classic icon in the annals of aviation history. Its contributions to marine time patrol and its enduring impact on aviation technology ensure that the PBM Mariner remains an enduring chapter in the story of flight. Thanks for watching. I have more similar videos on my channel that you may like. See you guys in the next video.